Hello and welcome to the Below the Double Yellow Cup Series Live tonight for race number three from Road America. This is the Below the Double Yellow 150 at Road America. It's going to be a 35 lap race tonight, just over 140 miles. And we do have stage racing here in the Below the Double Yellow Cup Series brought to you by the American Trucking Association. Looking forward to a great night of racing at a track that many people will not be familiar with but uh, should be a lot of fun here going left and right tonight the drivers headed to the qualifying session right now and we have uh, a view of chris samar the v-speed camaro rolling out on the racetrack he was fourth fastest in the practice session All right, hopefully we are back up and going and uh let us know if you're out there, if you can uh, see us or hear us. I apologize. Uh, hopefully we don't have these issues all race long like we had in the first race, or we're going to have to figure something out. Streamlabs has not been cooperating uh, as of late, so hopefully we can get this all figured out. But I want to thank everyone for joining here tonight. I want to thank the sponsors and Below the Double Yellow podcast, as well as the American Trucking Association is drivers getting out on the racetrack to make their qualifying laps. Let's take a look at the qualifying ticker to see where everybody slots in. I don't think anyone has taken a time just yet. Hopefully everybody out there had a good day. It's almost the weekend and these drivers trying to take home a victory to add their name to the list of winners here and celebrate over the weekend. Currently two winners so far this season, Seth Hatchell and Mark Emerson. And uh, let's take a look at Mark here, last week's winner who just edged out Seth Hatchell at Las Vegas to take home a very dramatic victory in the very 32 Rolex machine that he is driving right now. Of course, very different style of race here tonight and uh, going to make for a lot of great racing action. And we do have the stages at laps 10 and 20 and then all the way to the end of the race at lap 35. as he is working down this back stretch. I think just getting the car up to speed here on the outlap as I'm not sure if anyone has made a time just yet. Looks like Dylan Teal is on his flyer right now. The number 78 black wire Toyota Camry. So Dennis Faircloth, that Geico machine. He is so fond of the the uh, green and blue, that number 80 machine down the back stretch here underneath the bridge. And slows it way up here, tight left hand corner. See, so he gets it woed down nicely onto the rumble strips as no one has put a time in just yet. Long qualifying session in this race session tonight. He gets that car around the right-hander. Now down another short shoot. Slows it up now to a left-hander. Very technical racetrack. You gotta be very accurate with your turn in or uh, you will lose a lot of time here. Seth Hatchell and all the tape on the front of that race car. That is crazy. As he gets that car slowed down into the same left-hander. Now our first time up on the board, Eric Lambert with a 217.89. Nick Gardner a 219.42. We'll see if anyone can improve on that. Safe Ferris with a 213.35 for Team Red Speed. As he makes his way on to his second lap here, see if he can improve that lap time. Only three drivers. Now four is Samard across the line with a 214.6. About 1.3 seconds off your pole time. And he is going to call it a day with that lap time. Nick Starling puts a lap in at 216.77. That car gets woed down to go for lap number two. 
plenty of time to do so. It's the American Trucking Association Toyota Camry into the right-hander. And he gets very sideways, able to hang on to it, though. That's going to cost him quite a bit of time, but still may be able to uh, pick up the pace a little bit. He ran a 212. Keith Maiato, the pole sitter now, as he pulls a four tenths out in front of Safe Ferris. Dennis Faircloth, he puts in a lap time as well. All right, take a look at who else is on the racetrack. Looks like Seth Hatchell got his lap time in at 215.13. And if you're not familiar with this racetrack, it is Road America. 4.04 miles of road course. In Plymouth, Wisconsin. The uh, lap record here, Dario Franchitti in the uh, kart series back in the days oh look at the big slide from seth hatchley able to keep it underneath him with the lap record here a 139.86 it is a 14 turn racetrack and uh we'll see if we can go on board with someone who has not yet completed a lap how about aj stravato as he comes up the hill here to start his flyer or this may actually be his flyer 213.03 that's going to be second fastest. We'll see if he tries to improve here. So he goes through turn number one. You see the big slide there. Slows it down for the right-hander. Gets the apex of that corner pretty well. Onto the rumble strips on the exit. And down the long back straightaway here under the bridge up to a left-hand corner. can hear him shifting while he's getting up to speed here. Makes that left-hander very slow, probably down into first or second gear through there. And then back up through a couple gears, back down to the left, a little short stretch. Should be back up and live. Apologize for this. Uh, once again, some broadcasting issues here, some streaming issues. The streaming software continues to give us problems here in 2021. And uh, we will have to get things figured out. But uh, hopefully we can keep the stream up and going for a bit longer without any significant issues. Hopefully we don't miss much. And I want to thank everyone for joining and watching here tonight. Welcome, Blazer Pete. Welcome. Uh, War Bovine, Char Lolo, Senior Musifer, Das Warlock, everybody, thank you for coming out here and watching. And uh, hope you enjoyed the broadcast here tonight. And uh, again, apologize for the uh, stream issues. Currently, Keith Maiato is your fastest on the racetrack. And. Uh, Having some issues here with the overlay software as well, it looks like. All right, hopefully that fixes that. And it doesn't look like anybody's really out there except for, well, here's Brandon Vasquez on the racetrack. He's trying to get a lap time in. Uh, he's got a few more minutes to do so. Noah Michalski, uh, at the end of pit lane, attempted to get part of a lap in, but it looks like he got some incident points and decided to start from the rear. We have 18 drivers with a lap time fastest. Keith Maiato with a 212.94, the only driver in the 212s, and then uh, slowest on the track so far. Tony Baird with a 220.669, and then... Uh, Everyone else from eight, from 19th on back has not taken any lap time as of yet.
do encourage you to check out Below the Double Yellow, sponsor of tonight's race. The BTDY150 at Road America Below the Double Yellow podcast. You can learn more about them. We'll run some ads here in just a few minutes. You can learn more about what they are all about. We also want to introduce a new sponsor of ours, uh, Guayaki Yerba Mate. You can... Type in the command in the title in the chat to learn more about them. They are a new sponsor here to B-Speed and uh, proud to have them on board. And AJ Stravato continues to put some lap times in trying to get more practice. He's got a new paint scheme on the car, the Waste Management number 48. He gets that thing really hot into the corner, into the grass a little bit, somehow makes the turn. But uh, very uh, nice new paint scheme for Stravato. It's got flames on there. Must be a big fan of waste management. So he brings that car down the long back straight away here. His lap times have fallen off a bit since his fast time, which I think we will expect to see. But he has put in quite a few laps. Look at that thing under braking, breaks loose. Jeremiah Vincent looked like he tried to take a lap. Brandon Vasquez still has not gotten a lap time in. I'm guessing that he is just getting some practice here and five minutes left. I think he's, yeah, he is not going to register a lap time. So. Uh, we are going to go to a quick commercial break. Looks like Keith Maiato probably going to be your pole sitter here tonight. And we will be right back with your starting grid. B-Speed is proud to be partnered with Below the Double Yellow Podcast, a podcast for NASCAR fans by NASCAR fans. Listen to Nick and Joe discuss all the latest on-track action available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. B-Speed is also proud to present the 2021 Below the Double Yellow Cup Series, brought to you by the American Trucking Association, starting January 14th, 825 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursdays at twitch.tv slash vspeedsim. Hey, honey. It's happening. The baby's coming. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm on the way. Hey, buddy. You ready for the big game? You're going to be there. Right, Dad? Pal, you can count on me. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Hey, honey, Josh's flight landed early. He'll be about 6.30. Can you make it? Okay. I'm on my way. We've got total gridlock out there this afternoon. The average American spends over 40 hours a year, nearly two full days, stuck in traffic on our broken roads and bridges while our lives move full speed ahead. It doesn't have to be this way. <laughs> Where is he? Husband's on his way. <laughs> It's time for Washington to get America moving again by finally funding our country's infrastructure. Where's mom? Tell Washington to fund America's infrastructure because life won't wait. V-Speed, your home for sim racing excitement, providing dramatic moments from iRacing and beyond. We offer broadcasting for leagues across iRacing, with specialized packages to help grow your league and advertise your sponsors. I think, and right now, Stravato with that advantage, half a car length, the difference between first and second, going into turn one, he gives the bumper to Connor Horn. These two have gone all year to get to this point. Jacob Shorba drifting up the racetrack. They make contact. The 88 goes around. The 95 goes around. The 12 caught in it. Our design team can help you create anything from paint schemes to sim rig parts with expertise in both 2D and 3D design with 3D printing capabilities. Looking to get into broadcasting yourself? We can help you design and operate custom overlays to make your stream look as professional as possible. Our team can create and manage custom merchandise sales for you and your team. 
Check out our shop to see what we have in stock and how we can create some awesome merch for you. Check out our race replays on YouTube or catch us live weekly on Twitch. Visit us at vspeedsim.com to see how we can help you on your iRacing journey. I'm Jonathan Proper, CEO of Drops.com, and I'm here to give you the naked truth about laundry. Size does not matter when it comes to laundry. Let's start with jugs. It's big all right, messy too, and expensive. You know why? Lots of plastic, lots of water, shipped all over the country, from factory to warehouse to retail. That's what you're paying for. It's a dinosaur, and we all know dinosaurs are extinct. Meet our imitators. This is your average detergent pot. It has 20 plus chemicals with names nobody can pronounce. Nice colors. I hope they don't stain. I know color doesn't clean. Would you take a bath in either of these? No way. That's why we developed Drops. Drops is dye free, MPE free, phosphate free, animal cruelty free. So free, it's freaking awesome. We make drops with only six safe ingredients, certified by the EPA. Drops is tough on dirt, but gentle enough for a baby's skin. It's so gentle, I'm taking a bath in it. Doing laundry with drops is hard to f up. One drop equals one load. Now, can we talk about my package? 100% recyclable. Manufacturing drops ourselves and distributing directly helps us cut out the middleman and reduce transportation costs. With delivery plans as low as four bucks a month, the average family can save $100 a year. Hello? What are you saying? The cleanest clothes at the lowest price? You're damn right it's a great deal. Thanks for calling. Shipping is always free. You choose the product and plan that's right for you, and we'll drop drops at your door. The naked truth is that drops makes laundry better and life easier. Every drops counts, saving money, plastic, water, and time. So go to drops.com. The first one's on us. And back at the racetrack now, getting ready to get things underway. And we'll see where everyone is starting in tonight's race. We bring up our starting grid. Let's see where your favorite drivers are starting in tonight's race. Keith Maiato gonna be your pole sitter here, the number 36 machine. He takes away the pole position. He has two close runs, uh, almost victories this season already. And he's probably the favorite here tonight on the road course. But alongside him, A.J. Stravato, last year's champion, looking to uh, show his road course racing prowess here. And we'll see what he can do from the front row. Starting in row number two, Safe Fair is the number 44 machine. And Dennis Faircloth, the number 80. Fifth place will be Eric Gallion. Sixth is going to be Mark Emerson, last week's winner, with a good starting spot here tonight. Chris Samard rolling off in the seventh position. Seth Hatchell, his teammate, going to be rolling off in the eighth spot. Dale Glessner starting in ninth position. And to his outside, Ryan Gemmel in the number six machine. Nick Starling going to be rolling off in the eleventh spot. Dallas Sullivan starting in the twelfth position. Thirteenth is going to be Eric Lambert. Fourteenth will be Lyle Sulfridge. Fifteenth is Nick Gardner. Sixteenth is Nick Alves. Seventeenth is going to be Alan Dice, the number 57, and Tony Baird going to be rolling off in the 18th position. And that is going to be it for all of our lap takers here in the qualifying session. TJ Brendel going to be starting 19th, first of the drivers to not take a time. Mark Beverly rolling off from the 20th spot. 21st will be Jordan Scheffler. 22nd, Brett Somers. 23rd is Justin Carey. 24th, Jeremiah Vincent. 25th will be Dylan Teal. 26th, Noah Machowski. 27th, Kyle Payne, and 28th will be Zach Smith. Brandon Vasquez starting in the 29th position. Lane Sulfridge going to be rolling off in the 30th spot. 31st will be Kevin Cornelius. 32nd, Timmy Emanuele. 33rd, Robert Gilmore. 34th, Cody Adkins. 35th, Jordan Brockle. Dennis Steele, 36th. And that's going to do it for green, green. tonight's starting grid. So we're trying to get a view on Keith Maiato who may not have taken the green. It looks like he's not even on the racetrack. 
Might have dropped out. So we're trying to get a look at the timing here. Yeah, it looks like perhaps an issue at it, with the server at the start of the race. Say Ferris takes over the lead straight away. As we had a very short grid time, they headed to the start finish line. Before we were even aware that they were going to be going there, Safe Fair is down the long backstretch here to the left hander. He's got a couple of car lengths in hand over the 48 of AJ Stravato under braking. He's still able to hang on to that Stravato a little bit squirrely there as they make their way up the hill here to another left hand corner through that turn. Ferris with a two or three car length advantage and Dennis Faircloth, Eric Gallion, Mark Emerson, the top five, followed closely by the V-Speed machines of Chris Samard and Seth Hatchell, Dale Glessner for Team Red Speed and Ryan Gemmel right there as well for Team V-Speed. As uh, it has been a V-Speed and Red Speed domination this season, but uh, that may be under fire here as AJ Stravato putting pressure on your race leader, say Ferris and I really wonder what happened to Keith Maiato. Looks like he's not even in the race at all right now. So a uh, disastrous start for Keith. We'll see if he can get in before losing a lap. As out of that corner there, you see the big wiggle from Ferris, but still two car lengths in hand. AJ Stravato trying to close in. Into the tight right-hander here. Ferris still able to get through very cleanly in the 48 behind him. We take a look a little bit farther back. No real issues that I can see at the moment. Oh, we do have some issues. Kevin Cornelius around. What happened to Kevin? And so he got a little bit wide on exit, a little bit loose possibly, and a little overcorrect. Yep, that look, looks like it is what happened. The 17 into the barrier hard hit with the uh, left front. As he is back up to speed, but uh, perhaps some other contact around through the pack. Not really sure. Actually, Robert Gilmore has brought it onto the pit lane. So Robert with some big damage to the number 40 car. He is already in his pit stall for the first time tonight. Let's see if anyone else is bringing it down here. Alan Dice just across the line right now. He had some issues getting going as well. I think there may have been a server issue, but here's a challenge for the lead. As AJ Stravato now right on the back bumper as they go through the kink here down the back stretch. He's going to look to the outside. Ferris going to defend low under braking a little bit squirrely. Able to hang on to it though. One car length separating the top two and then a couple more back to Dennis Faircloth. The battle for the top three starting to break away from Eric Gallion, who's got pressure from Mark Emerson, last week's winner. But uh, still not close enough to make that pass happen. And then Chris Samard right there as well. So a couple three-car packs here. A few more car lengths back to Seth Hatchell, who's kind of all by himself. Uh, about four or five car lengths back to Dale Glessner and about five more back to Ryan Gemmel. Trying to keep an eye on anything else that's happening throughout the pack here. So we see the 31 of Mark Beverly slow alongside the 81 of Cody Adkins, but uh, this is the battle 24th, 25th. And I think a lot of these guys back here trying to bide their time. Look at this, Brett Somers, no hood on the race car. He's already got a ton of damage as he goes off the course again. And it may be a long race for Brett here if he can't get that car under control. Already missing the nose, or the hood rather. And uh, back in the 28th position, Jordan Brockle behind him challenging for that next spot. Looks like some damage on Justin Carey as well. Jordan Schepler back here with a little bit of damage on the left front. And then we've got a few more guys starting from the pits, it looks like. Uh, but Robert Gilmore still on pit lane as the leader is going to make their way down into turn one. Safe Fair is still hanging on to that. The battle now for the top two is separating as Dennis Faircloth has lost a little bit of ground. Now they make a right-hand corner here. Got to keep the tires underneath you for as long as possible when road racing like this. And look at AJ Stravato trying to work the draft as they work down the backstretch. He's going to look to the right side once again and Safe Fair is... He's going to give him that lane. 
Not going to let him pull the draft down the straightaway here as Stravato tries to dive it in deep. And so does say Ferris. Ferris goes wide. A little contact there on exit as they keep it straight. And look at the big wiggle there from Emerson in the background. Say Fair is hanging on to the lead right now, but under heavy pressure. Here comes Stravato to the outside into the tight left-hander here. Ferris with the preferred lanes. Stravato wiggling under braking, but he's going to actually pull a bit of a crossover move as they go side-by-side side through the long sweeping right-hander. This is the longest corner of the racetrack, I believe. And look at that. They're just right on top of each other. Stravato with a great run. Faircloth starting to close back in as these two continue to battle in another right-hand corner. And then you've got kind of the S's on this backstretch here. There's a lot of back backstretches and, and, uh, and left and right-hand turns. I'm not all my, uh, myself all that familiar with this track. Uh, I've only, I think, run here a couple times in... Uh, and some different simulators, not actually in iRacing. I just got the track the other day and uh, took a quick run around it. But uh, from what I've seen on on TV, this is a very exciting track. And usually they're racing in the rain here. As look at the battle now for the lead down the front stretch, up the hill. And here goes Stravato. He's going to look to the left side of Safe Ferris. It's down the front stretch. Getting into the braking zone into turn number one. Oh, can't see anything with that camera view. They are still side by side to turn one. Look at Dennis Faircloth putting the pressure on now as Safe Fair is under attack. Stravato catching the grass just a little bit, but he's going to be able to complete the pass, I think. No, Ferris pulls back alongside. Can he get the run down the straightaway? Doesn't look like it's going to happen. But somehow finds some horsepower under the hood of that number 44, and he is alongside the 48. And right on the back bumper of Stravato is Dennis Faircloth, who's looking to take advantage as he looks down to the inside now underneath AJ Stravato. The 48 slams the door shut, and the 80 now moves to second. Safe Fair is back to third, and now Eric Gallion now in the mix as the top four have broken away from Mark Emerson. It is nose to tail here among these four. And then Emerson about five, six car lengths back. He's under pressure from Chris Samard, who checks up as the 32 went a little bit wide there. It has been exciting to this point in the race. Only four laps in, but these guys racing for those stage points. The stage is going to be ending at lap number 10. And uh, don't forget, each lap here, four miles long. With 14 corners, definitely a challenging racetrack as the 80 of Faircloth. He's going to go a little bit wide, but the 48 gets a wiggle headed on to the straightaway. Does that open up an opportunity for Faircloth to gain some time back? As he is still just one car length behind, he's been right up here in the mix. But AJ Stravato hanging on to it for now. One car length as they go through the S's here. A lot of elevation change here at Road America. As Stravato pulls a bit of a gap now, four or five car lengths that closes back down to just two as they make the tight right-hand corner to the front straightaway. And let, let's go on board with Eric Gallion as he's got three cars out in front of him. We're actually going to go to the roll bar here with the ATA in car. Eric Gallion, as he looks out in front, you see the three cars in front of him. Safe Fair is a little bit squirrely there. But Gallion uh, showing off some uh, road racing skill. Doing a good job so far in the opening lap. Started up in the top five. He's been up here the whole race and with a huge gap back to Chris Samard, who's passed Mark Emerson. That gap almost five or almost four seconds. AJ Stravato, though, up there leading the way as you see a tire off for Safe Ferris. A little wide for Galleon right there. As AJ Stravato 
out in front by two, three car lengths now. Dennis Faircloth still hanging tough behind him. And the top four have broken away. Like I said, Chris Samard a ways back. Is, oh, Seth Hatchell a bit off the racetrack. And he's going to get passed up by his teammate. Ryan Gemmel, maybe not as Hatchell gets back under control. He's got some right front damage on that. And Mark Emerson off the racetrack and right in front of the V-Speed machines. That is dangerous. He's going to be able to hang on to sixth position, but uh, I'm sure Seth not all that happy about that. They raced each other very well and very cleanly last week. Mark came out on top, but uh, can't be pulling moves like that too often. As uh, look at Chris Smart, he has just driven away from this group. 4.8 seconds, though, behind uh, Eric Gallion in the fourth position. Let's take a look at the top four right now. Take a look a little farther back. Eric Lambert with the uh, Simulators Anonymous number three Chevy Camaro. He's got some left rear damage. He is in the 17th position, one of the fan favorites here. He's got a nice advantage over some of the cars behind him. Look at Nick Gardner up here in the 13th position. He's starting to put some pressure on Dallas Sullivan and Tony Baird. This little three-car group just outside the top 10. Nick Starling hanging tough up here in the top 10 in that 10th position. The American Trucking Association Toyota Camry down the front stretch into turn number one. Car slows up under braking. Able to get through that corner very cleanly, and he is right now about 20 seconds behind your race leader, A.J. Stravato, who has now pulled out about a one-second gap over Dennis Faircloth. About another second back to say Ferris. Another six tenths back to Eric Gallion. Those top four. The class of the field so far. But you can see Chris Samard actually starting to close in on fourth place. As a battle back there. Mark Emerson. Seth Hatchell. I don't think Hatchell cut him any slack that time. As the 32 ran a bit wide. And now he's going to go a bit wide again. Off into the dirt. Trying to get that car back under control. Here goes Gemmel. Now Emerson who's made a few mistakes here over the last few laps. Back to the eighth position, last week's winner. So he tries to get that car slowed up into the turn here. He had some good times in practice and qualifying. As, oh, Dale Glessner going to go a bit wide through the corner there. That's going to allow Nick Starling to close in, and he's going to check up just a little look to the outside here. It looks like Dale's going to give him that position for the moment as he gets that car back up to speed. So Nick Starling to ninth, Dale Glessner back to 10th in their team red speed machine. But it is all AJ Stravato out in front. One second the difference between himself and Dennis Faircloth, the number 80 Geico machine. As they climb the hill here, such a unique position on this racetrack. And Stravato, he's getting ready to uh, start putting some drivers a lap down. We have 32 on the lead lap. And Dennis Steele right here with Dylan Teal. Uh, Dennis right now, uh, two minutes and eight seconds behind your leader. So that's about nine seconds in front. And you see... Brett Sommers there with some more trouble. He is currently the last car on the lead lap. You see the race leader behind him. But Brett with the, uh, obviously, the damage on the race car really hurting his lap times. About 15 seconds a lap off the, the leader's pace. And I'm sure he'll probably just let those guys go when they get there. But um, a few surprise drivers. Uh, towards the back here, Zach Smith. In the 30th position, uh, I think he picked the wrong race car, usually driving a different uh, different type of car, and I think that scheme not quite prepared. Oh, Timmy Emanuel, he spun on the racetrack in front of him. So he gets that car up to speed again, but a little incident there for Timmy in the number 39. As we have some pretty good battles outside the top 20 Jordan Brockle right now Cody Adkins you can see on the screen I think I saw Keith Miato on the racetrack 
He is three laps down. Your pole sitter is going to have to pull some strategy here to try and get back onto the lead lap. It's going to be very difficult to do so with no um, full course cautions. But uh, right now, 217.3, just as quick as your leaders. But right now, last place, three laps down. And uh, obviously some connection problems at the start of the event, costing him a chance to win tonight after uh, qualifying on the pole. Uh, I think he's going to be hoping to get it, get out of here with at least the top 20 or top 25, but uh, that may be a challenge. As right now, Stravato on rails out in front of Dennis Faircloth, but that margin has not grown. Still right around one second is Stravato a little bit a struggle to get up that hill right there. And you can see Faircloth actually closing in last time by. It was uh, about four-tenths faster than Stravato. There's something to be said for patience on these road courses. Trying to get too much out of the car too quickly can really cost you on the latter part of the run. These are short runs, but even 10 laps can make a difference. You see Zach Smith, he's just going to let the leaders right on pass. As he is well off the pace, he'll let... Uh, I think all of the top five on by. As uh, they'll be battling for the stage win here in just a couple of laps. Stravato really slinging it into these corners. I, it is very interesting to see how he is navigating this road course. And right in front of him, Dylan Teal goes very wide off the track. He is off into the, the gravel and right into the tire barrier. Going to tow it to pit lane. And Dylan Teal with some issues towards the end of stage number one. But look at this. Dennis Faircloth just four tenths behind A.J. Stravato. Can Dennis Faircloth be a surprise stage winner here in stage number one, showing off the road course skill in the Geico machine tonight. And he is challenging one of the best here in the below the Double Yellow Cup series, A.J. Stravato. Though I don't think we saw really any road course racing action last year or last season. As Dennis peaks low, not going to go this time. Is he actually a little bit conservative on entry? That made the 48 dive a little too deep as he is having trouble getting that car through the gears. You see TJ Brendel off in the grass behind them. But they are starting to approach some lap traffic. This battle for the race lead and for the stage It's going to come down to the wire, I think. And Dennis Faircloth, really a challenger tonight to win the race. As they climb the hill on the front straightaway, this is the battle for the lead. Safe Fair is in the third position. He's been able to pull a margin over Eric Gallion, and that is 3.7 seconds up to the leader now. So he has lost time to those guys, but actually last time by three tenths faster than Stravato and just as fast as Dennis Faircloth. So he's found a little something extra in the tank and maybe has a shot. If these guys make a mistake, Timmy Emanuel, he's going to go wide and let those two right on past. And Dennis Faircloth, he is really on it right now, trying to get to the back bumper of AJ Stravato and give him a challenge here on this lap. He's got one more to do it after this to potentially win the stage. You see Brandon Vasquez is going to go wide and let these two right on past. As Stravato... And Faircloth climbed that hill under the bridge. The left-hander down the short chute here to another right-hander. More of a kink, really. And hear how long he is waiting on the throttle in this number 80 car. I'm just trying to point that thing where it needs to go. This kind of off camber turn here, the long sweeper. They wait on the throttle, get it back up to speed now. A little squirrely on the gas. And that margin right around a half second. So they sling it down the backstretch here, Stravato. Oh, a little bit of a 
wheel hop there into the corner and we'll see how they do coming out of it he is still struggling through this section to put the power down but able to pull a little bit of a margin there over faircloth now the gap over a second as they make their way into the final corner and uh, up the hill onto the front stretch stravato now 1.2 is faircloth not his best lap of the race but he has been close enough and if stravato still makes a mistake he could still win this stage but aj stravato showing the way uh a little bit of a battle back here dale glessner's had some struggles here in stage number one after running in the top 10 he is back to 12th position and uh, able to get by him is dallas sullivan and tony baird now baird in the final uh points paying position here in 10th after starting in 18th, he has had a good run so far. Nick Starling up there in the ninth spot. He is 11.7 seconds behind Mark Emerson, who finds himself in the eighth position. And back at the front, Faircloth has lost touch with Stravato. Now two seconds the margin. Maybe Dennis pushed it a little bit too hard one of those laps and overheated the tires, and he has not been able to close in. But uh, see, Ferris still hanging tough in third. Eric Galleon, a very impressive stage number one in the fourth position. And uh, I've been very impressed with Eric uh, since the end or the, the later stage of last year. Uh, he has been very impressive in his uh finishes the way he's run these races and been able to get some uh some very strong overall runs as he finds himself in the top five here once again this season it's seth hatchell who has a race win and also a second place to open the year he is looking for another top five to keep things going and right now in that fifth position he passed up his teammate chris samard who must have made a mistake not too long ago that 37 car back to sixth spot as it is a uh, V-Speed Trio, five, six, and seventh position. And headed towards the start finish line. It is gonna be AJ Stravato headed up the front straightaway now. And he is gonna win stage number one. So AJ Stravato earns a playoff point. And 10 bonus points for stage number one. Great job by AJ. As we are going to let the top 10 roll in here before that yellow flag is thrown. And we'll show you the results of the stage. So AJ has not let up one bit. Dallas Sullivan. Oh, this battle for that 10th position is raging. He is headed towards the final corner. It looks like he's going to be able to take it away from Tony Baird, but a little bit wide there. Here comes Baird, and there's a slow car. Zach Smith, this is going to be side-by-side side coming to the line, but it looks like Dallas Sullivan, I think. Dallas Sullivan going to get that 10th position. A great job there for Dallas. Out. As we are going to get a caution for the stage. Oh, that was looking pretty sketchy through there. Oh, and they get cleaned out. Dallas Sullivan... This is what happened. The 98 under braking goes a bit. He gets a bit loose there, and that's going to cost him a bit under the yellow flag. But uh, AJ Stravato, your stage winner, he'll take away that playoff point. 10 bonus points. Dennis Faircloth in second. Say Fair is third. Eric Galley in fourth. Seth Hatchell with the top five here in the stage. Chris Samard in sixth. Ryan Gemmel seventh. Mark Emerson eighth. Nick Starling in ninth. And Dallas Sullivan able to capture that final spot in a neck-and-neck -neck battle coming to the start-finish line as they are going to make their way back to the pace car. What a battle for the lead throughout this race and also what a battle there at the end for the final points-paying position. As we are going to head to a quick commercial break here, from Road America, this is the Below the Double Yellow Cup Series, and we will be right back.
V-Speed is proud to be partnered with Below the Double Yellow Podcast, a podcast for NASCAR fans by NASCAR fans. Listen to Nick and Joe discuss all the latest on-track action available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. V-Speed is also proud to present the 2021 Below the Double Yellow Cup Series brought to you by the American Trucking Association starting January 14th, 825 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursdays at twitch.tv slash vspeedsim. Simulators Anonymous is an online gaming community. The heart of this community is playing simulator-style games, everything from driving, farming, flying, to the occasional survival game. We would love for you to join us. If you play these style of games, or if you're just looking for a great community, we strive to be a community you can be an active participant in by offering events like every third Saturday night is a late night trucking on Truckers MP. We have a very own Minecraft server and with other servers starting soon. Come join Simulators Anonymous today at www.simulatorsanonymous.com. Boston Web Marketing is New England's largest full-service web marketing company specializing in SEO, SEM, website design, social media management, reputation management, and more. Founded in 2009, we have rapidly expanded and are able to service small to large clients nationally as well as worldwide. We are a long-standing Google partner with a large team of SEO specialists, certified AdWords professionals, web designers, social media experts, and web marketing gurus. Our team provides excellent, knowledgeable, and highly effective web marketing services. Contact us today to get started. 617-676-8109 www.getfoundquick.com Hey, honey. It's happening. The baby's coming. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm on the way. Hey, buddy. You ready for the big game? You're gonna be there. Right, Dad? Oh, you can count on me. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Hey, honey. Josh's flight landed early. He'll be here about 6.30. Can you make it? Okay. I'm on my way. We've got total gridlock out there this afternoon. The average American spends over 40 hours a year, nearly two full days, stuck in traffic on our broken roads and bridges, while our lives move full speed ahead. It doesn't have to be this way. Where is he? Husband's on his way. It's time for Washington to get America moving again by finally funding our country's infrastructure. Where's mom? Tell Washington to fund America's infrastructure because life won't wait. And back at the racetrack now. Driver's potentially going to be making a pit stop here. Looks like AJ Stravato going to lead the field right on down. Then it's Faircloth, Safe Ferris, Eric Gallion, Seth Hatchell, the top five as they make their way onto the pit lane. And very slow down the pit road, right around 45 miles an hour. And we'll see how these guys get into their pit boxes. We'll do a quick interview with, uh, I think we're going to interview Dennis Faircloth when we get back onto the racetrack as he's going to pull into his pit box. Almost overshoots it as, oh, Stravato does overshoot his. So, so does Chris Samard. That may be a, a problem for those two. As we'll see who wins the battle off. Keith Nayato going to go right on by. I think he is going to take a wave around as Dennis Faircloth off and away. Safe Ferris also. And Stravato going to drop all the way to fifth position. So it is going to be Dennis Faircloth taking over the race lead. And we're going to try and pull him up here for an interview. Let's see if we can get him in here real quick. 
Dennis Faircloth, this is Adam in the V-Speed booth. You got a copy? I do, Adam. How are you doing? Well, not too bad. Looks like you're doing pretty well yourself up in the race lead now after taking it off of pit lane. Uh, you're pretty quick here in the opening stages of this race. And uh, you were up there challenging uh, AJ for the lead. Uh, you know, what do you got here tonight for these guys? Um, honestly, I'm not sure um, because I thought my black flag was cleared, but it might not be. It's still telling me to let AJ by, and I don't know where he is. So, um, yeah, I am. Yeah, I don't know what to say right now. <laughs> uh, did you get a black flag for, for passing under yellow? It was unsafe pit exit for some reason. Um, there wasn't a blue cone, so I didn't know if that really mattered. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll see how that shakes out for you. But definitely quick here. Uh, did you put a lot of practice in this week to, to be able to get the speed here tonight? Oh, yes. I probably put in about five or six hours of practice. Um. Yeah, definitely showing for you here. And I'll, I'll let you go. I know it's confusing to have me talk to you while you're trying to figure that out. So good luck the rest of the way. No problem, man. Thanks for interviewing me. It's pretty cool. Yep, no problem. Good luck. And uh, a little bit of confusion there um, among the field trying to figure out what's going on. I think uh, a little bit of an unsafe pit exit there for Dennis, as it looks like pace car lights are still on. They were going double file, but maybe extended caution here. So we're going to go quickly to a side-by-side -side commercial break, and uh, we'll be right back with that green flag. V-Speed is proud to be partnered with Below the Double Yellow Podcast, a podcast for NASCAR fans by NASCAR fans. Listen to Nick and Joe discuss all the latest on-track action available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. V-Speed is also proud to present the 2021 Below the Double Yellow Cup Series brought to you by the American Trucking Association starting January 14th, 825 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursdays at twitch.tv slash vspeedsim. Welcome to V-Speed, your home for sim racing excitement, providing dramatic moments from iRacing and beyond. We offer broadcasting for leagues across iRacing, specialized packages to help grow your league and advertise your sponsors. I think, and right now, Stravato with that advantage, half a car length, the difference between first and second, going into turn one, he gives the bumper to Connor Horn. These two have gone all year to get to this point. Jacob Shorba drifting up the racetrack. They make contact, the 88 goes around, the 95 goes around, the 12 caught in it. Our design team can help you create anything from paint schemes to sim rig parts with expertise in both 2D and 3D design with 3D printing capabilities. Looking to get into broadcasting yourself? We can help you design and operate custom overlays to make your stream look as professional as possible. Our team can create and manage custom merchandise sales for you and your team. Check out our shop to see what we have in stock and how we can create some awesome merch for you. Check out our race replays on YouTube or catch us live weekly on Twitch. Visit us at vspeedsim.com to see how we can help you on your iRacing journey. And uh, some crazy developments here. AJ Servato, winner of stage number one. Uh, he is back here in the 18th position. And Dennis Faircloth, who finished second in the stage in 19th after both of them, I believe, with unsafe pit exits. After uh, not exiting correctly. And uh, safe fair is Seth Hatchell going to be on the front row here. And safe basically inherited the race lead at the start of the race. And he's kind of done so once again. So perhaps safe Ferris can go and win a uh, another stage he's already won one stage here this season and uh, trying to get his second of the year Seth Hatchell of course going for his second race win of the year 
after winning a stage last week very, very fast at Las Vegas. And uh, a few more corners here before we get back to the green flag. Such long pace laps. But we want to thank everyone for coming out here tonight. And hope you are enjoying the broadcast. Thank you, uh, Josiah. Cheering on Vincent Motorsports. Glad you're enjoying so far. Glad to see you out here. As we are going to do a quick recap of tonight's race, one caution, two lead changes so far, and uh, kind of under strange circumstances as well. Keep my auto back to two laps down. Uh, did not bring it down the pit lane. So he is going to be on older tires, but uh, should not uh, get lapped, I think, with the time remaining in stage number two. It's going to be a very short stage, and we'll see when they uh, actually get going again. Should be uh, just about six laps in this stage. Also, never really took a look at the weather, but definitely hot track temps, 101 degrees here in Wisconsin. So that's why some of these drivers have been struggling for grip, uh, getting up through the gears. We'll see if anybody struggles this time by. Really not many staying out on the racetrack. Just Timmy Emanuele, who took a wave around, it appears. The number 39, he gets back on the lead lap. Uh, second to last car on the lead lap. That is Justin Carey, who is the last car on the lead lap. As he goes off the track, getting back around, trying to catch up to the leaders. As here we are coming to the start-finish line. Over the hill, green flag. green flag in the air. You see the flag man waving away. And Safe Ferris with a good restart there. He's gonna jump out in front as they battle for the second position headed down into turn number one. It is Seth Hatchell and Eric Gallion fighting it out. Gallion's gonna take that position away as Hatchell now drops to the third position as they fight behind him. Ryan Gemmel and Mark Emerson a very tight racing there. Looks like Ryan's gonna hand that spot over. He's gonna go a little bit slow into the corner. Samard right behind him, able to check up and uh, hang on to that position as well. Nick Starling behind them. Dallas Sullivan, Nick Gardner, Dale Glessner back into the top 10. But uh, we saw this from Safe before. Very quick out of the gate and kind of lost some speed mid-run and ended up finding it again towards the end of the run. But we'll see if he finds a bit more consistency in this run here. Just uh, six laps to the end of the stage. Look at Eric Gallion, though. Not far behind him. And uh, we were just praising Eric Gallion a, a little while ago, uh, saying how strong he has run since the end of last season. Lots of uh, top five, top ten runs and uh, up here in contention right now in that second position. But look at uh, Hatchell challenging right on the back bumper of that race car. Mark Emerson starting to close back into the picture. We saw Mark kind of in the same scenario as safe. We're very quick on the short run and then started to fade a little bit, made a few mistakes. We'll see if he has learned his Hatchell a little bit loose there. And I just cursed Mark, didn't I? He went off the racetrack as soon as I said that. He almost goes off again. Might have heard his name on the broadcast and that could be distracting sometimes. But uh, he still rides in that fourth position. A few car lengths out in front of Ryan Gemmel and Chris Samard, who have put a pretty wide margin over Nick Starling back in the seventh position. But a very strong run for Nick. Up four positions in the uh, American Trucking Association Toyota Camry. Dallas Sullivan up four spots from where he started in the Fancy Feast Ford Mustang. And then Dale Glessner in ninth, right where he started. Tony Barrett able to get back in the top 10. He made that mistake on the lap right after the uh, end of stage one. Went off the track in turn one, right in this part of the track. And uh, able to recover back up into the top 10. AJ Stravato, he is climbing through the field in the waste management machine. And uh, Dennis Faircloth just two positions behind him. But here goes AJ looking at the inside. Got to be very careful working through this field. There's Noah Michalski alongside him. They're going to make their way under the bridge here, down the backstretch. 
but not be surprised to see that two car just let him go and he does Kevin Cornelius starting to recover after the early incident as well you see him in the bright green black and gray machine As Michalski, he's in that 13th spot. He is up 13 positions. Heck of a run so far for him in the early stages of this race. And Safe Ferris, he has pulled out a huge margin over Seth Hatchell, who has been able to get past Eric Gallion. And Gallion must have made a mistake, but uh, Hatchell up to second now, two seconds behind Safe Ferris, and... Uh, he is really wheeling that car, but safe. Pretty solid margin out in front. And if you're just joining us here tonight, this is the Below the Double Yellow 150 at Road America. We're in stage number two right now. It's a 35-lap race, just over 140 miles. And uh, we are in stage two, which will be ending here in, it'll just be four laps when we get to the line right, aw right about now. And uh, this is a four mile racetrack here in Plymouth, Wisconsin. And it has been a very exciting race. Right now you see the top six have kind of broken away from the rest of the field. Right now, Safe Fair is out in front. He has had a, a very strong race after pretty much leading the early portion. He's led now seven laps. Uh, since the end of uh, stage one, he was able to inherit the lead. And if you are just joining us and uh, you're enjoying the broadcast, please consider uh, hitting that follow button or subscribing. It helps us out a lot here on the channel. You can also check us out at all these different social media outlets, facebook.com slash vspeedsim, and uh, on Twitter, at vspeedsim, where we uh, post race announcements before each and every broadcast. You can also find us on Instagram, where we post other interesting automotive and racing-related content. You can find us on YouTube at vspeed and vspeed garage as well. Thank you for the follow, Hollomer. I also want to thank 10-Pin Split, and uh, Char Lowell for the uh, follows earlier today. Not sure I got to uh, thank you guys, but uh, appreciate you guys tuning in and following. Really helps out a lot. And hope you are enjoying a safe fares. Look at that car nearly about to step out from underneath. Uh, Seth Hatchell has closed the margin pretty significantly now. He's gained a whole second on safe. And really putting those tires to the test. Let's go on board with him here with the ATA in-car. can hear how long he is waiting on that throttle as they go up the hill now. Pretty much a blind straightaway as they go down the front stretch. Down in turn number one. Gets that car woed up. Over the curb a little bit, back onto the left-hand curb. And you see hangs it right on the outside edge of the racetrack. Safe Fair is a bit more conservative, running more of the middle of the track. I think he sees Seth starting to close in as they get onto the back stretch under the bridge here. The Sargento Bridge. And this is definitely uh, a fun racetrack to, uh, to sling it around. A lot of exciting racing here in the uh, Xfinity Series. In real life, these guys... Uh, They've done a lot of wet races here, which is not, you know, traditionally a NASCAR thing at all. And those races often get extremely entertaining because really anything can happen. And some drivers very good in the rain. Some are not very good in the rain. But uh, it is a great equalizer for equipment. You could have a bad race car in the dry, but a good driver 
could really get the most out of that in the wet. As Safe Fair is approaching Brett Sommers, that car even more damaged than before. And he is currently the last car on the racetrack who uh, is still running as he goes way off the racetrack now. Going to give plenty of room to these guys trying to get back on the racetrack in front of the V-Speed machines. That is dangerous. But uh, he is able to get back on the track. And right now, we'll go through uh, the field, actually, and kind of show you where everyone is running. 32 cars on the track out of 36 that started, and 26 are on the lead lap. But uh, let's take a look at the field, starting with your race leader. Safe Fair is out in front. He has led eight laps, basically started on the pole as Keith Mayato had connection problems and uh, actually missed the start of the race. But Safe out in front. He's about to lead his ninth lap of the race. Uh, ninth out of 18 laps. And uh, right behind him, Seth Hatchell, the number eight car. He finds himself in that second position after starting in eighth. He has done a good job here in this stint to uh, keep up with Safe Ferris. Mark Emerson started sixth. He is up in third. Had some issues uh, around the midpoint of stage number one, but has since recovered. Eric Gallion got off to a great start in this stage, but uh, lost a couple spots here. Back to fourth now after starting in fifth. Uh, Ryan Gemmel up five spots after starting in the tenth position. He rides fifth. Chris Samard in sixth after starting in seventh. And then a ways back, Dallas Sullivan has moved to the seventh position after starting in twelfth. Nick Starling. In the eighth spot after starting in 11th, Dennis Faircloth has climbed to the ninth position. What a recovery for Dennis, who has been able to navigate this uh, this traffic uh, and was up there in contention for the, the stage win early on. He's in the ninth position. Dale Glessner, a little hot into that turn there. He's 10th after starting in ninth, and he is under heavy fire from AJ Stravato, winner of stage number one. As oh, into the corner of the 10, locks it up a little bit. Almost disaster for Stravato as that's going to slow him up a little bit more as he climbs to 10th. Tony Baird in the 12th position after starting 18th. Nick Gardner 13th after starting 15th. Nick Alves in 14th. Jeremiah Vincent, a quiet night for him. He started 24th and he is riding 15th. Kevin Cornelius battling with him. Currently 16th after starting in 31st. Lyle Sulfridge in 17th after starting in 14th. Eric Lambert, 18th. He's got some damage on the nose of that car, and it looks like he's going to try and take that spot away. Noah Michalski, 19th. As Brett Sommers, more issues behind them. Alan Dice in the 20th position. Uh, after starting 17th, he is just taking a sweet old time. Lane Sulfridge up nine spots to 21st. Cody Adkins rides 22nd after starting in 34th. Kyle Payne, he's uh, he's doing a little lawn service right there. Uh, started 27th, he is currently 23rd. Thank you for the follow, Ground Zero Pittsburgh. Simi Emanuele started 20 or started 32nd, he is 25th. Justin Carey, last car on the lead lap, started 23rd, he rides 26th, doing a solid job back here. The number 21 machine, Dennis Steele. First car, one lap down in the 27th position. TJ Brendel in 28th position. Brandon Vasquez rides in 29th, right where he started. And Keith Mayato, who was your pole sitter, missed the start of the race. He went three laps down, currently two laps down in the 30th spot. Brett Somers, you saw him go off again there. He rides 31st, three laps down and heavy damage. Uh, currently lapping at a very slow pace. Zach Smith on the pit lane now, four laps down. He is the last car still on the track. Then Robert Gilmore, 33rd. Jordan Shepard, 34th. Mark Beverly, 35th. Dylan Teal last in tonight's race in 36. But the battle is starting to heat up for the lead as Safe Fair is out in front. As Seth Hatchell just a car length behind him. Yeah, I'm not sure how um, Brett Sommer's car is still running, but uh, obviously there's enough airflow to that radiator, so he's not overheating. But it is quite a miracle that that has not leaked out all of its coolant at this point. And we are going to be coming. This is actually the fight for the stage win, so Safe Fair is trying to hang on here. He's led the whole way. 
And Seth Hatchell trying to take it away from him here on the last lap of the stage. Say Ferris for Team Red Speed. And Seth Hatchell for Team V Speed. Hatchell goes a little bit wider on entry there, trying to get a good run on exit. Not able to close the margin. As Safe really wheeling it through the S's here. And I don't think Seth is going to be able to get to him unless Safe makes a big mistake on the exit of this corner. And it does not look like that's going to be the case. Just a couple car lengths in hand, but Safe Fair is up the hill. Looks like he is going to capture stage number two. So Safe Ferris wins another stage this season. We'll see if he can end up in victory lane at the end of the race. But Mark Emerson holds off Eric Gallion. That is third and fourth. Then Ryan Gemmel holds off his teammate, Chris Smart. AJ Stravato able to get up to seventh as he got around Dennis Faircloth and others. Faircloth eighth. Dale Glessner going to come across the line in ninth is Nick Starling trying to get past him that is going to be 10th for Nick Starling and uh, just ran through all of those as they came across but you can see him right there on your screen safe fair is your stage winner stage number two congrats to safe for that playoff point his second of the season got a stage win at Daytona Ultimately did not get a very good finish in that race, but uh, the stage win and the playoff points are going to be very important as it gets closer and closer. And if you're new to the Below the Double Yellow Cup Series, uh, this series sponsored by the American Trucking Association. want to thank... Uh, that group for uh, coming on board. Trucking moves America forward. You can learn more. Use the command exclamation point ATA in the chat. And that'll take you to uh, trucking.org where you can learn more about the American Trucking Association and how you can support them. And also below the double yellow podcast, the uh, presenting sponsor. And those guys operating this league. Uh, go check them out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. A big time guest going to be on their podcast coming up soon. As uh, they are starting to get back into production of those shows. Just talking racing action in the season. NASCAR season obviously closing up very quickly here. Just a few more weeks until NASCAR is back underway at Daytona. I want to thank everyone for uh, following tonight and watching and enjoying. Hope you guys are having a good time here tonight uh, watching the below the WL Cup Series at Road America. Uh, if you're enjoying, please consider following or subscribing. Check us out on Twitter, right here on Twitch as well. If we hit these follower goals, we'll be giving a shirt or hat of your choosing away. You gotta follow on both of those platforms to be eligible for the giveaway. And when we hit those magic numbers, we will be doing that to a, uh, a random follower on those platforms, so. Uh, if you want to be eligible, go check us out on Twitter, right here on Twitch as well. And we are closing in a little bit on those numbers, 423 here on Twitch now, so not too far away, and also uh, about 40 away on Twitter. So thank you, everyone, for hitting that follow button as well. Josiah Vincent, J. Vincent 4, thank you for that follow, man. Glad you're out here watching, even if you couldn't be racing. Looks like these guys are having a good time out here and some pretty interesting comeback stories for uh, a couple drivers. AJ Stravato back in the top 10 at the end of that stage. We'll see what he can do. He's led nine laps here tonight. And uh, he qualified second. He was the fastest car in qualifying other than Keith Miato. And a uh, very similar story in the practice session as well. So... I think if AJ can get back out front, he I mean, he has plenty of time to do it, but uh, he's got to navigate the traffic well so he doesn't lose a lot of time up front that he's going to have to make up before the end of this thing. And 
We'll see how these guys do on the pit lane in just a little bit here. And cheer on your favorite driver. Uh, closing in on the end of the race. Who do you think is going to win? We'll try and follow along with your favorite driver for the rest of the way. We've got uh, Ground Zero Pittsburgh cheering on Dale Glessner. And Dale right now in that ninth position, doing a good job of uh, hanging tough up here in the top ten. Pretty much all race, even after a couple of small mistakes, he is right up here in the mix. I know Dale is actually a bit of a dirt racer, so uh, this is a little bit out of his element, but uh, definitely impressing so far. Uh, his best lap time in this race at 215.8, which is uh, right up there in the top top 10 or 12 cars. So <clears throat> obviously the racer is a racer and you uh, are able to be fast in almost anything that you want to be. He's definitely picked up the asphalt um, cars pretty quickly. So that is uh, very interesting to see. And uh, happy for him for having some success here early on in this type of racing. As yeah, Safe is gonna, or Ferris gonna bring the uh, number 44 Red Speed Machine down the pit lane. As he is gonna lead the field. We'll see how these guys do getting into their pit stalls. We saw some issues on pit exit last time among the leaders that really cost them. And I will be interested to see if Keith Maiato elects to take another wave around here or if he is going to have to bring it down. But uh, he's going to be able to swing it all the way past these guys as Safe Fair is into his box. AJ Stravato into his box. Much better this time. We'll see how he does with that stop. Oh, you see Seth Hatchell getting off and away, but not going to be close enough. He's actually potentially going to lose a spot to Mark Emerson. Oh, and he might get unsafe pit exit. Oh, here comes Dennis Steele. Oh, boy, that is sketchy. That is really sketchy. Is Dennis able to, I think, collect that race car? Let's see what happened right here. Wow, that was close for Mark Emerson. I'm going to go on board. Let's see how this looked. Oh, yeah, right across his nose, and they're able to get past him now. But I think Seth Hatchell might have gotten unsafe pit exit. As they were side by side, he crossed the commitment line. In a bit of a good run, gone to waste for the number eight car as he has the same misfortune as the uh, the number 80 and the 48 did at the end of stage number one. And he is going to go all the way back to tail end of the lead lap, which is, I think, 26th position, possibly. Unless other cars elect to take it down pit road. So Seth giving up all of these positions. Let's see if we can get a word in with... Uh, See if we can find somebody here. How about Dallas Sullivan? Dallas Sullivan, this is Adam in the V-Speed booth. You got a copy? Hey, Adam. Yes, I do. Well, Dallas, you've been uh, right around the top 10 all race long. Uh, I know you ran the, uh, the 24 hours of Daytona. Uh, you know, just uh, earlier this week or last week. And, uh, you know, you think that helped you uh, in preparing for tonight's race? And how are you feeling the rest of the way? No, the, uh, the 24 definitely helped get me uh, kind of in the rhythm and focusing. Although I have made a couple mistakes tonight, I think it's more just the way I'm driving this car. Um, definitely had a good time running that race, though, and kind of wish we were driving one of those cars right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> So it's a workout. Uh, I wish I would loosen up a little bit. So uh, I've been having a pretty good battle with Nick, Tony, uh, I think Dale has been around us. 
uh, just trying to survive, not make any mistakes, and get to the end of this thing. Yes, sir. The car very clean, the fancy feast machine, and uh, now you've had a couple uh, solid runs uh, so far this season. And you think you can get out of here with the top ten? I, if I could come out of here with the top ten, I'd feel like I got a win. So I got my crew chief on the hood, Valentino. We're gonna see if we can get a couple spots here on this restart, and uh, at least at least get in the top ten. And go from there. Yes, sir. Well, good luck the rest of the way. Anybody you want to give a quick shout out to before we let you go racing? Uh, man, everybody on the Loaded Dice team, they're uh, bringing up the rear with the rest of us, so I uh, hope they can get to the end of this, too. Yes, sir. We'll see how they can do, but uh, good luck. Just uh, a little over 10 laps to go. We'll see if you can uh, make it to the end in one piece. Hey, thanks a lot, man. All right. That was Dallas Sullivan riding in that 10th position, number 46, Fancy Feast, Ford Mustang. Pretty funny paint scheme. He's got the cat on the hood. And then I'm pretty sure it's one of those little play uh, city mats on the roof. So definitely a creative scheme. Uh, and he's having fun out there riding in the top 10. But right now, Safe Fair is looking for his first victory of the season. He's got two stage wins now this year. He didn't get a win all of last year, but he had a few good opportunities, just was never able to fully capitalize. And we'll see if he can do it here at Road America, but he's got some hard chargers coming up behind him. AJ Stravato there in the second row after a very strong pit stop. Also can't, out, uh, can't count out Dennis Faircloth right behind him. I believe the sixth position for Dennis and then the fourth position for AJ. And it will be Safe Ferris, Mark Emerson on the front row. Just a few more corners before we get that green flag. Uh, and let's see where Seth Hatchell is going to end up lining up 23rd. He's got a lot of cars to go through and not a lot of time to do it. So definitely kicking himself. He was racing for that position. I don't think he got the position anyways. And uh, ultimately missed the uh, commitment line there. He's got the win from Daytona. A second place last week, but maybe not going to be able to follow that up with a top five here tonight. So uh, a tough run there for... Seth Hatchell, but a lot of interesting storylines for tonight's race. Last week's winner right up here on the front row for this restart. As we've got a little ways yet to go, we've got uh, Grunt cheering on number 33. That is Eric Gallion, who's had a very strong run up here in the top five all race long. He's got a little bit of left side damage on that race car. Not sure how he got that. But such long pace laps here. This is this is crazy. It's almost four minutes per pace lap. Um, but I guess that makes sense because the lap time is just over two minutes for an actual green flag lap. So... Beautiful area up here, though. This is uh, definitely a very scenic racetrack here in Plymouth, Wisconsin. And we'll do a quick race recap here. Two cautions, two lead changes. And we're about to get back underway. Safe Fair is your race leader. As they make their way on the right-hand turn here. Pace car is going to make that hard right-hand turn onto pit lane. Very Interesting, they pit backwards here like they do at Watkins Glen. Let's see if Fair is going to get them going here. Green flag back in the air. They're underway, getting squirrely through the gears is the 32 of Emerson. And look at AJ Stravato all over his back bumper. Going to have to be very tactical with his moves. Oh, and hard under braking. Stravato nearly locked it up there. Safe Fair is big slide out of turn number one. 
as he is able to hang on to the lead. But here comes Mark Emerson challenging, looking to the inside. Dennis Faircloth going to take the inside move on AJ Stravato. Can he make that pass stick? As nearly contact there with the 80. Still to the inside. Now going to get passed by the 48. So they are running fourth and fifth position. Safe Fair is out in front. Mark Emerson, two car lengths back, and then another two or three back to Eric Gallion. It's down into the corner. Mark Emerson, he's going to give the bumper to the 44, but that's going to actually cost him more time than it costs safe. As Mark loses about two car lengths. And now under heavy fire from Eric Gallion, those two were shooting it out back and forth. But it looks like Gallion's just going to give way to the 48. Knows that car is very fast tonight. He may do the same for Faircloth. Oh, he tries crossing him over a little bit heavy on the brakes there. And the 80. Very good run through that corner. He's going to look right to the right side of the 33. And Gallion's going to drop now to the fifth position as the 48 and 80 go right on past those two. The heavy hitters in stage one now climbing back up towards the podium. As Safe Fair is out in front now, seven tenths of a second. Mark Emerson in second. And it will be 10 to go this time at the line. And the gap back to third place, AJ Stravato, just 1.7 seconds. Can Safe Ferris hang on to the race lead and win? With 10 laps to go, still so much time to, that's that's 40 miles. So much time to make mistakes as Emerson now falling a little bit farther back, right around eight tenths of a second. And AJ Stravato not able to close up anymore, still 1.8 behind. But Dennis Faircloth starting to close up a little bit on Stravato. There's still four or five car lengths separated. Maybe even more than that actually is the 80 right up against that grass and Stravato through the dirt. Ebo Fett, thank you for the subscription. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate that. Hope you are enjoying the broadcast. Got Lazy Gaming. Cheering on Dennis Faircloth. Also, Kibo Fett cheering on Dennis. As uh, right now, he rides in fourth and not far behind. Oh, look at this. A little bit of contact, I think. What happened right here? It looks like the 44 either locked him up or what happened exactly. Oh, the 32 just missed his breaking point. And that's going to allow AJ Stravato into second. And uh, Mark Emerson all the way back to seventh position. He gets passed up by Dale Glessner, Ryan Gemmel, Eric Gallion, Faircloth, and Stravato. Thank you for the subscription. Mad Cat Felix, thank you guys so much. Thanks for coming out each and every week and uh, supporting and watching. As right now, Safe Fair is out in front. That gap, one and a half seconds back to AJ Stravato. And this is so reminiscent of early on in this race. This is basically how things were, except Safe didn't have this kind of a margin to lean back on. But he also wasn't racing for the win at that point. About nine and a half laps to go. He kind of wheel hops it into that corner, but able to keep pretty good speed in it. Thank you for the subscription, Lazy Gaming 89 I think we've got some people conspiring with all the subscriptions. Thank you guys so much. It's the 44 of Safe Ferris. He's going to hang on to that top spot. One second, though, the margin is Stravato closed in a little bit out of that last corner. And here comes Dennis Faircloth as well behind them. Let's go on board with Dennis. The ATA in car. As he takes a look towards AJ Stravato, just about a second between those two. And uh, yep, about a second faster last time for AJ Stravato over, say, Ferris and Dennis was about three tenths off of AJ's time, but uh, definitely still in contention for this thing. As that gap visually closing now, AJ Stravato, he is really closing in under braking in these corners. 
uh, just about eight tenths the margin. Look at him through there. He closed up about three car lengths now. That gap right around a half second. So safe, got to find some speed in a couple of these turns. Although he's running some of his best laps. Stravato running his best lap last time by when it matters. And he sees that win right out in front of him. He is on the back bumper now. This is the battle for the race lead. Safe Ferris. He's got Brett Somers climbing through the grass there. And Brett has had a rough night. Got to give props to him for still sticking out and running out there. But he is currently five laps down in 31st. And Safe able to pull a little bit of a margin through that corner. Now up to about a half second once again. To go through the kink there. Stravato on the ragged edge of grip. Dennis Faircloth also closing the margin. He was two seconds back. Now it's 1.2 to say Ferris is under braking. Stravato almost wheel hop in that car. And the 44 also doing the same thing. As they are pretty much matching their speeds right now. Stravato closed up, but it's so hard to find room to pass on these road courses. As on to the front straightaway here. Safe going to look to the inside line, try and cut the draft, but AJ's going to stick right behind him. And across the start finish line. Going to be eight laps to go. Is under breaking. Safe fair is out in front. Stravato a little bit squirrely, but he is able to close up by another car length through there. And down the hill to another right-hander. Safe a little bit uh, tighter to the curb on entry. And look at Stravato trying to put that power down. He is struggling to do that, but still keeps the speed in it. It's been amazing. He's done that all race long. I don't know how he's been able to do that, but it's a very good skill. To be able to do that is safe. Going to take the defensive line a little bit hard under braking. He's going to wheel hop it. And oh, almost loses control. That's going to give the lead to AJ Stravato. Safe Ferris with the mistake. That is going to cost him two positions. Now back to third as AJ Stravato takes over the top spot. And Dennis Faircloth into second to try and see if he can make up for not winning stage one. And that gap right around three quarters of a second. Safe Ferris, though, with the mistake. He's going to be kicking himself after that one. Struggled in that turn a couple times in this run. And after almost flawless stage two. He's going to have a hard time catching back up to those two in front of him who have been the fastest all race long. Especially this number 48 car. That car has been on rails. But still plenty of time for a mistake by any of these guys. So I'm sure that 48 car is going to be a bit more conservative at times, but he doesn't look so conservative right now. Look at that car all over the place. And I'm going to see if there's any battles going on right now. Chris Samard fading a little bit. He's back to, or actually he restarted outside the top 10. So he's actually climbed a little bit now up to the ninth position as uh, Nick Starling, his next target, riding in eighth. He's had a good race. A little bit of a slide for both of those guys as they head back up the hill. Seth Hatchell, who uh, restarted 23rd. He is up to 14th right now, putting pressure on Jeremiah Vincent. And we'll see if Seth can get back in the top 10. He's got two cars right here in front of him for position. And then quite a margin up to Dallas Sullivan. I think it's over 10 seconds. But Seth just needs to be patient here. He's still got time to make up that margin. And I think he has the speed to do so as AJ Stravato now 1.1 seconds out in front of Dennis Faircloth. I'm pretty amazed at how competitive this race has been at the front. Um, you know, it's really been just a handful of cars leading, but the margin has not been really any greater than about two seconds at any point in this race. 
which is very uncommon for these road course races. Usually there's a driver who's uh, far and away so much faster than everyone else. And uh, that has not been the case here tonight. AJ Stravato very quick, but so is Dennis Faircloth. That 80 car, uh, I think a little bit of a surprise to me. Man, these guys are really pushing it now. Going to be coming to six laps to go. And just around 15 minutes left of racing. So still a lot of time to make a mistake. As AJ Stravato looks to the inside of Dennis Steele, he's going to get that car wowed up. And oh, and that's going to cost the 80 a fair cloth quite a bit of time. He caught the 28 at the wrong moment. And he's going to lose a lot of time after being off uh, offline there. Yeah, he lost about eight tenths of a second with that whole situation. It's the 28 of Dennis Steele goes, uh, I believe, a lap down. Maybe that is it. Yeah, just one lap down. That car, pretty heavy damage on the left front, though. Uh, he's going to keep it on the racetrack. It looks like the camber knocked out of it pretty badly. As he's got Ryan Gemmel closing in behind him. Ryan in the fifth position. Pretty solid race. And then Mark Emerson uh, kind of recovering a bit. Back to the sixth position. You know, I still think Dennis Faircloth has a chance at this. He, he ran four tenths slower last lap. But he got held up by at least six or seven tenths. Uh, in that one turn and so I think he he definitely has a chance at this he's got to run some perfect laps to get up there and Stravato maybe being a bit conservative able to keep the tires a bit cooler and run a bit smoother but that gap right around 1.4 seconds but you step an inch too far off the curb and and your race could be over so they've got to be extremely careful. Pretty narrow racetrack, it looks like. As through there, it looks like Stravato pulled ahead by another three or four tenths, so he's very good in that long sweeper. And then to the kink on the straightaway, Faircloth really pushing it through there, so he's trying to make up time on the straights. under braking we've seen stravato get a bit squirrely a few times and we'll have to see if he makes any mistakes in that kind of uh, situation but he is currently pulling away right now no mistakes it'll be five laps to go for aj stravato for his first victory of the season after winning stage number one uh, he has yet to claim a victory this year, which he's been in the running in, in pretty much both races, but mistakes or accidents have cost him dearly in both of those. Now five laps to his first checkered flag of the season after winning nine races last year. I think it was nine races, eight, either eight or nine races, and also the all-star race in this series, so... The dominant driver looking for his first victory of the season here in race number three. Look at this battle just inside the top ten. Nick Starling seventh, Chris Samard eighth, Dale Glessner in ninth. As Emerson off the racetrack in front of them, that's going to cost him some momentum down the long straightaway here. These guys might get up to the back bumper. As that gap just under a second between Starling and Mark Emerson. Oh, and he's off the track again. This is the same kind of thing we saw from Mark earlier in the race. Later in the run, he started missing his braking points. Just a little bit less consistent than he needed to be. And uh, he has lost a lot of time. He's lost a few positions with the mistakes. But at times, he's been one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. Uh, top uh, 
five or six lap time is his best lap but uh just some of the mistakes have cost him look at this nick starling chris samard through the right hand sweeper there And they are still side by side down the back stretch here. Nick Starling trying to keep position as he nearly goes off into the grass. It looks like he's going to surrender that spot. Chris Samar deep into the breaking zone. He's going to take that position away. Good job there by Chris Samar on the outside. As look at Dallas Sullivan still uh, out in front of Tony Baird. And what happened to Seth Hatchell? Hatchell with an issue what happened to Seth I don't know what happened to Seth let's uh, let's see if we can find what happened to him here he had caught up to Dallas Sullivan I believe I don't really know what happened, so I'm not seeing the issue for him, but he is currently 30th, two laps down. Not sure. We'll have to find out at another point, but uh, big problems for Seth Hatchell, winner from week one and runner-up last week. Looks like he won't even finish inside the top 30 after a really solid run. Oh, almost a big issue for Dennis Faircloth as he gets that car back under control, but... He is really pushing the race car. He was a half second faster than AJ Stravato, which uh, with the time remaining would be enough to get there, but he can't make mistakes like that very often or he won't have any tires left to do it. As he is really wheeling that thing. Let's go on board with him. Just one and a quarter seconds up to the 48 car. He's doing a good job closing the gap back down when it was right up around two seconds not very long ago. Servato a little bit loose there. The battle for the lead is not over yet. Dennis Faircloth starting to close in, and AJ Servato maybe starting to feel that pressure. Is the 80 Geico machine trying to save him 15% on car insurance closing in but it is a breakaway from the top two over six seconds back to safe Ferris who's on a very strong race here tonight really nothing to complain about for safe uh, 18 laps led in a 35-lap race, he is going to come away with the most laps led. Uh, after starting in third, he wins stage number two and uh, right back in the third position. So not much to complain about there, but look at this battle three quarters of a second. Dennis Faircloth has uh, rallied the troops, and he is starting to close in as they get onto the rumble strips there. Through the left-hander up the hill, under the bridge. That 80 car looks as smooth as can be at this point. Misses the apex of that turn just a little bit, a little wide there. Going to cost him about a half tenth. And AJ Stravato, no mistakes through that section. He stretches it back out to around nine tenths, now back to eight tenths as they dive into the left hander here underneath the Road America Bridge. There's a lot of bridges here. I think there's three or four bridges at this racetrack. But Dennis Faircloth with a mistake, I think. Same spot he had a mistake uh, a little while ago. He goes almost off the track there. That was a close call. He's lost quite a bit of ground here in the last few corners, though. Almost doubling the margin. As we've got Brett Sommers wrecked off the racetrack right in front of the leaders. And uh, that may have cost Dennis. I don't know if he had to check up at all. But I think another car possibly with some issues through there. Yeah, the 23 of Vasquez way into the barrier. 
What happened to... He just missed the corner, I think. Yep, just straight into the runoff zone, into the tire barrier. I guess that's better than getting in the way of the battle for the race lead. But now that battle's starting to dissipate as it's 1.6 seconds, the margin between Stravato, Dennis Faircloth. He's going to have to have two laps. The two best laps of his life as right now he, he was about 7 tenths slower that time by essentially doubling the margin. But uh, these guys starting to catch up to another race car. I believe that's Justin Carey in front of them, the 21 machine, currently riding 24th position. It's under braking a bit squirrely there for the 48. Got to be very careful with the lap traffic. Got to catch him at the right time. But this battle, this race is not over yet. Dennis Faircloth, a big run right there. As I think Justin went a little bit wide. Still on the racetrack in front of him, though. Justin, not, uh, he's not too far off the pace. Although last time by, a 229 to the leader's 218. So that is quite a bit off the pace, actually. We'll see when they catch up to him. This could be a very awkward timing thing. As they're going through the big sweeping corner here. I think they might catch him on the straightaway, maybe through the kink up here. So this could get interesting as he's going to pull over and let these two right on past. One second, the margin as Faircloth has closed it back up a little bit. Stravato a bit wide through there, but able to keep it on the race. And uh, looks like we had dropped there for a second. <clears throat> and uh, apologize for that. I, somehow the internet just dropped for us. And we are back right now, but AJ Stravato still out in front. 1.7 seconds, the margin. And Dennis Faircloth, he has tried so hard here to get up there and challenge that 48 car, but he has just not had enough. They've matched each other lap after lap. He'll run a faster lap. He'll run a slower lap and just cannot quite ever get there. That 48 car so strong here at Road America tonight. Looking like he is on his way to victory. Still a few more corners yet to go. Could make a mistake, and it could be anybody's race at that point. But <clears throat> Dennis Faircloth, got to give him a big attaboy for the run tonight. This has been a very impressive showing. Keep up with one of the best drivers in the league, if not the best driver in the history of the league. Uh, the short history of the league, the 48 car. AJ Stravato, last year's champion. Looking like he is back to form after... Some strong runs in the early year, but a little bit off and some mistakes, some, you know, strategy calls, some misfortune. Even with the mistake on pit exit for both of these drivers, they climb back up to the front. And just a handful of corners left. Is the 48 a little wiggle there? And Dennis Faircloth, he is struggling right now. I think he might end up off track here, able to keep it on the track. But one more corner for AJ Stravato. And he is on his way to the playoffs. AJ Stravato, last year's champion. He's got something to say for this year. He is going to win at Road America. And what a race. Had to go all the way back to the tail end of the lead lap after a, a penalty on a pit road exit. And he comes home, your winner here, leading 17 laps, just about half the race. After starting on that front row, fastest driver all night long. He's going to take home the victory. And the second fastest driver right there behind him, Dennis Faircloth. What a run for him as well. He gives a, give a big congratulatory bump to AJ. What a drive by both of these guys to get up there. And then can't forget about third place safe Ferris. A heck of a run for him as well. Led 18 laps, won a stage. Uh, almost equally as dominant as uh, AJ Stravato. 
And they were very evenly matched, but uh, we're going to go check out the 48 burning it down as all these guys burning it down. So congratulations to AJ Stravato on his race win here tonight. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with post-race interviews. V-Speed is proud to be partnered with Below the Double Yellow Podcast, a podcast for NASCAR fans by NASCAR fans. Listen to Nick and Joe discuss all the latest on-track action available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. V-Speed is also proud to present the 2021 Below the Double Yellow Cup Series, brought to you by the American Trucking Association, starting January 14th, 825 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursdays at twitch.tv slash vspeedsim. Hey, honey. It's happening. The baby's coming. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm on the way. Hey, buddy. You ready for the big game? You're gonna be there. Right, Dad? Pal, uh, you can count on me. I wouldn't miss him for the world. Hey, honey. Josh's flight landed early. He'll be about 6.30. Can you make it? Okay. I'm on my way. We've got total gridlock out there this afternoon. The average American spends over 40 hours a year, nearly two full days, stuck in traffic on our broken roads and bridges, while our lives move full speed ahead. It doesn't have to be this way. Where is he? Husband's on his way. <laughs> it's time for Washington to get America moving again by finally funding our country's infrastructure. Where's mom? Washington to fund America's infrastructure because life won't wait. Welcome to VSpeed, your home for sim racing excitement, providing dramatic moments from iRacing and beyond. We offer broadcasting for leagues across iRacing, with specialized packages to help grow your league and advertise your sponsors. At it, I think, and right now, Stravato with that advantage. It's half a car length, the difference between first and second going into turn one. He gives the bumper to Connor Horn. Jim, these two have gone all year to get to this point. Jacob Shorba drifting up the racetrack. They make contact. The 88 goes around. The 95 goes around. The 12 caught in it. Our design team can help you create anything from paint schemes to sim rig parts with expertise in both 2D and 3D design with 3D printing capabilities. Looking to get into broadcasting yourself? We can help you design and operate custom overlays to make your stream look as professional as possible. Our team can create and manage custom merchandise sales for you and your team. Check out our shop to see what we have in stock and how we can create some awesome merch for you. Check out our race replays on YouTube or catch us live weekly on Twitch. Visit us at vspeedsim.com to see how we can help you on your iRacing journey. And back at the racetrack now, going to be bringing up our race winner from tonight's race. AJ Stravato, this is Adam in the V-Speed booth. You got a copy? I do. Well, AJ, you didn't have it all your way here tonight. You had to go to the back of the pack, and you charged all the way back up to the front. And when it mattered, you were the fastest car all race. Uh, you come home with the victory, your first of the season. How does it feel to uh, take it home here tonight? Work my uh, tail off, to say the least, to get up there. Um... That was very difficult too, because just the setup was that was a that was a dump truck we were driving around all race. And uh, good thing that we were sponsored by Waste Pro today. Uh, I think it was pretty <laughs> awesome. Worked pretty well to describe the setup. But man, uh, it I had to work my rear end. I had something happen. I got a penalty. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but it just seems like forever ago since it happened. But um, just had to work all the way from the back to the front made a mistake i think getting by a couple of cars and we got a really good pit stop uh, i had like a 13 4 i think and gained about four spots uh seth 
had his uh, penalty as well, and we just made it work. And safe in Dennis, whole race uh, kept me really honest, especially Dennis. I tell you what, man, he put in a lot of work. And just, uh, you know, just to show what hard work can do for you and uh, practice, he, he definitely put in a lot this week. And it showed. He made me work <laughs> my tail off. But overall, a lot of fun. Uh, definitely – the cra one of the craziest wins I think I've ever had, just in general, and just really happy to bring it home. That was really cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun watching you and Dennis battle it out back and forth. You were both charging through the pack because you both had the same penalty, um, and you ended up kind of leapfrogging him there through the cycle, uh, you know, of, of, of traffic, and uh, ended up out in front. But, you know, with the pressure on your shoulders there and he was coming back every so often he'd have a faster lap and close the gap by a few tenths did you think uh you know were you worried about making a mistake or was it just about hitting the next corner uh the right way each time uh, i'll be honest it was this race was really weird because i just had to really adjust my just how i drive these cars because the setup like i said it was really really tight and just you had to kind of break a little bit differently than I normally would because it would lock up and I I didn't have my throttle going down all the way it was like pressed up against my desk so I was definitely a little worried but I knew if I hit my marks and just did what I needed to do um we could bring it home and luckily we did that so I'm I'm pretty stoked about that and uh you know just a really cool win overall yes sir definitely a fun one to watch as well um, you head to Homestead next week where you captured the championship uh, last season. What are your thoughts on going out there? you think you can uh, win there again? I think we have a good shot. I just think we got to execute on uh, pit road, you know, getting in and out, I think is going to be a big thing and uh, just controlling the dirty air. Uh, you know, that was definitely a really cool time to go back to Homestead, especially after the championship and uh, winning that race and the championship, bringing that home last season. So hopefully we can do that, but uh, we'll see. Yes, sir. We'll see if you can make it two in a row here. You win race number three after leading 17 laps, charging from the rear, starting on that front row. Uh, very exciting race all together, and you take it home. Anybody you want to give a shout-out to before we let you go? Yeah, just uh, all the league admins, uh, V-Speed, uh, American Trucking Association, uh, Boston Web Market, Illinois Trucking Association, uh, Lazy Days Racing, Simulators Anonymous, and uh, I believe chuck hill truck and uh all these guys that make it happen and viking supplements as well uh really cool that we have a lot of sponsors on board for this league it's uh definitely a lot of fun and uh you know some good competition this year so looking forward to the rest of the year yes sir and congrats on the race win and uh we'll catch you next week see if you can make it two in a row absolutely man thanks for the broadcast yes sir thank you that was aj stravato your race winner always humble in victory uh, as he takes home another one here in the Below the Double Yellow Cup Series. We'll bring up Dennis Faircloth, second place. Dennis Faircloth, Adam in the V-Speed booth. You got a copy? I got a big, huge copy, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dennis, we talked to you earlier in kind of a disastrous uh, appearing situation when both you and AJ had to go to the rear of the field, but you guys were patient. You worked your way up through traffic, and you were right there fighting for it to the bitter end, but not quite enough to get there. Um, describe your race for us, and uh, is there anything you could have done differently to capture the victory tonight? The only thing I think I could have done differently was talk to AJ more in the last stage, because it seemed like when he would respond, he would mess up. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> then again, I'd probably mess up too. But uh, first of all, I got to thank uh, American Trucking Association, Illinois Trucking Association, Below the Double Yellow Podcast, Boston Web Marketing, Lazy Days Racing Simulator, Anonymous, not, uh, Anonymous I can never say that word, uh, Chuck Hills Trucking, and uh, you guys at V-Speed, uh, and Geico. They're not actually sponsoring me, but I've worked for them for 10 years, and if I wasn't working for them, there's no way I'd be able to afford this stuff. So, Yes, sir, and uh, great-looking paint scheme. I know you're a huge fan of the the blue and green uh, i remember seeing all the paint schemes being put up and that car looked great out here tonight uh it was really really fast and uh, obviously you said that practice uh, throughout the week really paid off um was there anything you learned while you were racing here tonight either coming through traffic or racing up towards the front i mean my brain was such a nervous wreck from when i first when i first passed safe when uh, he and aj got the battle in that first stage i was a nervous wreck i was shaking i'm I'm really, I've only been on iRacing since March 1st of last year. And um, 
I I get too nervous and I mess up. <laughs> so I'm telling myself, please be calm, please go slow. Uh, but I, I got to hand it to Eric Gallion. Um, he reached out to me a couple weeks ago, uh, just saying, hey, I, I know you're new. You seem like a cool guy, and uh, hopefully get we get to work together a little bit, even though we're not teammates because I'm not on a team. And um, uh, we kind of talked to each other about the about the track this week and uh he gave me some pointers i was completely backwards my first my best lap consistently on last wednesday was like a 221 um and then we we had practice on tuesday on this past tuesday and uh i was in a top three uh with a 212 or 213 and i'm like holy crap um so i kind of feel like i know what i'm doing now um hopefully it keeps up hopefully the luck transfers to you know the next few races um i'm not here to try to win every race but if i get a win awesome i just want to you know try this stuff out and see what happens never been involved with a league in my life on anything so it's pretty cool yes sir and uh, really making a name for yourself out here this was uh it was one of the best battles we've seen uh you know sometimes aj he comes out to these things and he runs away with it and if you weren't in the field he would have run away with it because it was another 11 and a half seconds back to third place so uh you kept him honest all race long and definitely uh, you know, a huge uh, congratulations to you for doing that uh, to come home in the runner-up position and uh, go to a very different racetrack next week at Homestead. What are your thoughts on going out there? Okay, so it's Homestead. I didn't know. Um, we, I think I might be all right. I don't know. I'll just try not to wreck everybody. Uh, just keep it straight. <laughs> but uh, I had no idea we had that gap on third. I wasn't looking. Um, wow, I. Had, I had no idea who the heck AJ Stravato was <laughs> until I ran the recruitment race. So, and I get in here and I see he's the guy that we're going to have to deal with. And the fact that, you know, I've kind of been around him a few times, these few races, and it, it kind of, it boosts your confidence. Definitely. Yes, sir. Definitely. Uh, racing against some of the best in the business too. It'll, it'll really make you learn quickly. And obviously that's the case. If you've only been on here for, for 10 months or so, that's, uh, fantastic to uh to be at this kind of level of um you know speed going up against some of the best here but uh you come home second you started in fourth and you were you know up and down through the the running order but uh man you were one of the fastest all race long anybody you want to give a shout out to um that you already haven't <laughs> shouted out to uh for tonight's finish just the guys that helped put this together i mean um and ma mainly my fiance for not getting too mad at me when I first bought this computer. Um, <laughs> so, uh, her words exactly were, you better get me a nice damn ring. Um, we accomplished <laughs> that too, so uh, <laughs> we're, we're all right. And uh, my, my friends who, uh, they log into Twitch once in a while to watch these things. So it's, it's nice to have some, have some support. Yes, sir. And uh, appreciate you getting them to watch the broadcast. And uh, you put on a great show for them here tonight. So uh, go celebrate that second place. A fantastic run for you here tonight, and uh, we'll catch you next week at Homestead. Uh, I'm going to drink me a nice glass of sweet tea, and I'll be all right. That sounds good to me. Have a good one. All right, that was second place finisher, Dennis Faircloth. Let's go to third place, Mr. Safe Ferris in the number 44 for Team Red Speed. Safe, you got a copy? Yeah, hear you loud and clear, Adam. Awesome, safe. Well, you ran a heck of a race here tonight. You were up there in contention pretty much all night long. Uh, started third, finished third. You lead over half the race, so uh, you got that uh, bonus point. Um, you also won stage number two. Give us a rundown of how you felt the car was and, and uh, maybe what you could have done to be a little bit closer there at the end. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> this, ra <laughs> this race was hectic. Uh, there is no way uh, that... I'm not sure how we managed to keep the car clean and not get any incident points throughout the race. Uh, this setup was chaotic. Um, we did a great job, most of the field, on keeping it together. And um, yeah, like we were trying our best to keep pace and run at full speed, trying to keep up uh, with AJ and Dennis. However, those two were the class of the field tonight, and they definitely deserved the one-two finish. Um, however, there is going to be a controversy throughout uh, the guys in this league in regards to their black flags that they got and getting them cleared. 
Um, as well, you saw during uh, the race that at the end of stage two, Seth Hatchell uh, got a penalty as well. However, he didn't get his uh, penalty cleared. So there is going to be a discussion about this for sure with uh, race admins. However, AJ, Dennis, they did a great job coming through the field and running the race that they did and getting the one two finish. So uh, great to see Dennis, uh, the new the new person in the league doing such a great job on road courses and uh, uh, keeping AJ on check, uh, trying to win the race and take it from him. So good job. And also a huge shout out to Eric uh, in the 33. Uh, he drove a really good race and kept me in check as well, trying uh, to stay in front of him. And uh, thank goodness we actually managed to finish third. I think this is only my second best finish in this league so far. So uh, happy to bring it uh, third place for Team Red Speed uh, and Team V Speed. Uh, as most of you know, first uh, year joining V Speed, and I'm so glad and fortunate to be running for them. Um, hopefully, we can always deliver these great results for them. Yeah, this is uh, two top fives in a row. Um... You know, definitely uh, a really good start to the year. You've got uh, two stage wins, uh, a lot of stage points. Uh, and, and, you know, even after having to come from the rear last week, you ended up with that top five finish. So uh, definitely a great, you know, momentum uh, to kick off the year. I know you had kind of up and down throughout last season, but obviously uh, you, you've kind of figured a few things out. And is there anything you learned in tonight's race that, you know, you can carry forward to some of the other road courses or or anything you kind of discovered uh, with these cars tonight? Yeah, I need to upgrade my wheels and pedals. <laughs> Logitech doesn't cut it uh, for road courses, that's for sure. And uh, I was just talking with second place there, uh, Dennis and uh, uh, AJ as well, about uh, their wheel setups and uh, pedals. And yeah, I'm definitely going to have to upgrade uh, those. Uh, but at the same time, it's all about being patient, running consistent, uh, not overshooting your braking uh, points uh, on the track and not wheel hopping. Uh, the setup, again, didn't help us, that's for sure. Um, however, um, we got some really good drivers in this league, and uh, most of us uh, kept it clean. So uh, it's all about uh, patience and just uh, practice, that's for sure. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what uh, Dennis was saying. He put in... Uh, five or six hours of practice throughout the week and definitely showed off for him. Um, yeah, he better he better buy a ring for his girlfriend, that's for sure, or fiance. <laughs> He's saying he already got one, so that's definitely good to hear. Um, oh, good for you, Dennis. <laughs> we're, we're going to Homestead next week. What are your thoughts on going out there? Uh, not one of my strong tracks over there. Um, however, last season uh, we ran decent. Uh, I think we finished uh, within the top ten. Um I don't have high expectations at Homestead. Um, however, uh, I know my teammates in Red Speed and uh, V Speed, uh, they have a good pace over there. So uh, hopefully they can take away that back-to-back -back Homestead wins from AJ and uh, bring it home for the V Speed team. Yes, sir. We'll have to see how that goes. But uh, great start to the year for you. Great run here tonight, Safe. And uh, great to see you come out of here in one piece. Some some cars did not, and uh, you kept that thing clean all race long and definitely put on a show for us all race. So uh, anybody you want to give a shout-out to before we let you go? Yeah, sure thing. Um, thank you for the good words there. Uh, I appreciate them. Um, I'm actually surprised that I managed to finish that race. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I'll take third uh, for today, that's for sure. A um, couple of... Um, couple of associations and uh, sponsors that I would really like to thank for coming on board and making this league a possibility and making us uh, race as well. Uh, American Truck Associations, thank you guys. Illinois Trucking Association, uh, the Below the, the Double Yellow podcast, Boston Web Marketing, Lazy Days Racing, Simulator Anonymous, uh, Chuck Hill Trucking, and of course the team that I'm running for. A uh, huge shout out to uh, the, the team owners, uh, which is you, Adam, and uh, Ryan Gemmel, uh, V Speed. Um, hopefully you guys are proud with the third place uh, finish here, and hopefully I can always deliver good results for you guys. Yeah, definitely a heck of a run for you here, Safe. It was a lot of fun watching you run up front there and, and uh, show off the speed. Uh, and uh, the pace here tonight. So 
looking forward to next week, seeing what you can do out there and, and hopefully follow up another uh, top five run at that track. So congrats on third place. I'll catch up with you right after the race here. Thank you, sir. And uh, thank you to all the fans and everyone. Have yourself a uh, good night. All right. You too, Safe. All right. That was third place finisher, Safe Ferris. Uh, very excited about the third place finish. And once again, your winner here tonight, AJ Stravato. You can see him burning it down on the screen there. Well, let's go to the rest of our results and head on out for the night. Two cautions just for the stages. No full course yellows here tonight. Three lead changes. Actually, not all that much, but it was a battle all race long at the front. And AJ Stravato came out on top after climbing from the rear of the field. So what a battle. What a race for him. As he takes home the victory. Dennis Faircloth, a very strong effort. He comes home in the second position. Third place, Safe Ferris. Uh, fourth place was Eric Gallion. Fifth place, Chris Samard. Sixth was Mark Emerson. Seventh, Dale Glessner. Eighth, Dallas Sullivan. Ninth, Ryan Gemmel. And tenth was Tony Baird. Very strong run for all of those drivers here tonight. In the 11th position was Nick Starling. Strong run for him as well. Uh, Jeremiah Vincent uh, finished his 12th, which I think was better than where he ran basically the entirety of the race, so that's a good finish for him. Nick Gardner finishes 13th. Noah Michalski, 14th. 15th was Eric Lambert. 16th, Alan Dice. 17th, Nick Alves. 18th, Jordan Brockle. Uh, 19th, Cody Atkins. And rounding out the top 20 was Lane Sulfridge. In 21st, it was Kyle Payne. 22nd, Kevin Cornelius. 23rd, Timmy Emanuele. 24th, Justin Carey. 25th, Lyle Sulfridge. 25th, or 26th, uh, Dennis Steele. Keith Maiato, your pole sitter who missed the start. He ends up 27th. TJ Brendel, 28th. 29th, Brandon Vasquez. And rounding out the top 30 was Seth Hatchell after uh, a late incident took him out of this. 31st, Brett Somers. 32nd, Zach Smith. 33rd. Uh, Robert Gilmore, 34th. Jordan Shepworth, 35th. Mark Beverly. And rounding out the field tonight was Dylan Teal in 36th position. I want to thank everyone for watching here tonight. And if you haven't already, please consider following or subscribing. We really appreciate all of your support, all the subscriptions and the follows tonight. Thank you so much. And uh, check out our uh, social media outlets, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of them on the screen there. You can find race uh, updates before each and every broadcast. You can also find race replays over on our YouTube V-Speed as well as our uh, second channel, V-Speed Garage, where you can find real-world automotive content. You can also find out about our other services at vspeedsim.com to learn more about what we do. And we are going to jump in with... Let's see who's on board here tonight. Uh, we'll jump in with Garrett Smithley, uh, who is playing iRacing right now. A driver in the Cup Series and I think Truck Series and even the Xfinity Series. I think he runs them all pretty much. So uh, go enjoy Garrett's content. And uh, thank you all so much. We'll be back next week with the uh, Below the Double Yellow Cup Series right here on Twitch. Thursday, 8.25 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll catch you then.